right. Well, welcome to Student Chapel, you guys. I am going to hand it over to Mr. White. I hope you guys have had a great week. We're at the end of the week. We're in the push, getting ready for Thanksgiving, short week coming up. So we are thankful to the Lord for that. Uh, today, you're going to hear a sermon uh, out of 1 Corinthians. We're continuing uh, in 1 Corinthians. Uh, it's about our faith in Christ as our confidence in life. And I think you guys will be very blessed by the sermon. Hopefully you will also be very challenged by the sermon to grow spiritually. And I will now turn it over to Evangelina. She will give us our introductory prayer and we will get started. God, we just thank you, Jesus, for who you are. God, we enter your gates, Lord, with thanksgiving and your courts with praise today. God, we just give thanks to you, Lord, and we bless your name, Lord. And uh, God, we just thank you for this time that we can be here this morning and we can, Lord, learn more about you and grow in your word, God, and just come together. God, we just thank you, Lord, for all the students, God, at Lighting Academy and all the staff and faculty and everyone, God, involved. I just thank you for your blessing upon everyone, God. And we just are thankful, God, in this season of Thanksgiving, Lord, we just, um, God, continually offer to you, Lord, a sacrifice of praise, God, and we just Thank you, God, that uh, you are good, God, and even when things are, um, God, just crazy in the world, God, thank you that you give us peace, and uh, Lord, we just keep our eyes on you, help us to be examples of you, Lord, and we just glorify your name. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for the November Chapel. My name is Alex Solodienkin. I'll be speaking to you guys today. It's an honor. Um, I don't get to do this often, so I'll do my best. Um, let's start with prayer. Uh, Lord, thank you for this day and for uh, giving me this opportunity to uh, try to communicate uh, what I've learned um, through reading your word, through talking to counsel. Let these words be yours and not mine. Let me not say anything untrue. And let these words um, penetrate the hearts of anyone listening and uh, make an impact through your Holy Spirit, Lord. Um, and let them ignore anything I might say that's not right. Amen. Um, so it's Thanksgiving. It's the month of Thanksgiving. And uh I think a lot of you probably know the importance of being grateful. Um, it's hard to be happy if you're not grateful. It's hard to be content with Jesus if you're not grateful. And uh, gratitude um, reduces want. And we can't, you know, have two masters. We can't want we can't both you know worship money and god for example the bible says um and if we don't have gratitude we start idolizing the creation over the creator how do we live content by the spirit with faith that results in life transformation that's a question for all of us to ask ourselves in Corinthians 1 9, it says, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Sending Jesus was an act of faithfulness. He's been promising that for thousands of years. Then all of a sudden, Jesus comes and fulfills the law. You know, God's time is much slower than ours. Um, trying to press God on our timeline is. Uh, can be a very stressful thing. Um, <clears throat> you know, you might be asking, I want to understand this now. I want to understand this fully. I want you to fix me now. But God's not asking us uh, to be fully fixed and blameless right now, the way most think. He's asking us to believe that we're blameless through faith, despite not being blameless in our own eyes. And that's transformational. We must never forget the faithfulness God gives us you know, sometimes we too strongly desire certainty or fame or fortune, but there's no faith in that. In Philippians 1.6, it says, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. You'll notice, will bring it to completion. So the work isn't completed yet, but it's begun. And I'm sure most of you can feel that it's begun. And if you're wondering if it's begun, it's probably a good indication that it has. And realizing that it's begun is what you have to hold on to. Now, does that mean we're not living in the spirit? I'd say not necessarily. Maybe someone is idolizing happiness. And God just wants them to be satisfied with the promise of eternal redemption when they will become blameless or we will become blameless. And slowly over time, that can eat away the depression as one builds faith and conviction over time in the regular works of God that one sees in their life. And a lot of times, or most of the time for me, this usually happens through fellowship with other Christians. Sometimes we're blind to the work God's doing in our lives. And seeing his work in other people's lives builds our conviction and faith in a transformative way. In uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17, <clears throat> it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Next, in Romans 12, 2, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, 
but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Notice it says, by testing, not by foreknowledge. So for those of you for who uncertainty is unbearable, wondering what your next step is, uh, what you should be doing. You know, the entire Old Testament is a story of rebellion and forgiveness. God's people rebel, he punishes them, then redeems them over and over and over. And still to this day, you know, it's hard to believe that right after being rescued from Egypt, you know, the moment Moses goes up Mount Sinai, the Israelites forget God's power Forget they just saw the Red Sea split and start worshiping golden cows. So he has them walk in the desert for 40 years. You know, there's physical consequences. You know, imagine being born during that time, during those 40 years as a child, you know, as a 10 or 15 year old or, you know, whatever your age is and wondering, God, what is it that you want me to do? <clears throat> he just wants you to wander in the desert for 40 years. And be content. <laughs> so try to apply that to your life. Hopefully you don't have to wait 40 years for something or a promise, but <clears throat> maybe that is how long we're going to have to wait for our, this work to be taken to completion. <clears throat> but just because it's not complete yet, just because it's going to take time, you know, we should not take disobedience lightly. You know, growing up, you know, as a teenager, as a teenage boy, we all have various uh, rebellious stages um, to varying extents. But I've learned to be scared of sin. And I pray all you get to that stage where you're scared of sin. You know, for both the physical and spiritual consequences. I'm thankful God gave physical consequences to sin. Otherwise, it'd be hard to imagine the spiritual ones. But in a lot of ways, the spiritual and physical are deeply intertwined, as if the physical is a reflection of the spiritual. And then in Philippians 4, 6 through 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, <clears throat> but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God will surpass all understanding, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You see, he's going to give you a peace that surpasses all understanding, not give you all understanding. He's asking you to be thankful today for the future work he will do, which takes faith. And if we don't, you know, pray and ask with thanksgiving. <clears throat> and, you know, his peace is not guarding our hearts and our minds. We're going to try to take matters into our own hands. Uh, think we can get away with sin. Think God's not there. But even if you do pray with thanksgiving, <clears throat> it's not like you shouldn't do anything about the thing you're praying for. You know, part of that building of conviction happens from trying and failing a thousand times until God's like, okay, I think you're close to giving up. All right, I'm going to come and rescue you. I don't know why he does it that way, but again, his time horizon is much slower than ours. And, <clears throat> you know, maybe it's when we have that full giving up of trying to do it our way that we finally fully rely on him, he finally answers our prayer. At least that's been the way it is with me. You know, if you're anxious, ask him to show you what makes you anxious. Not ask, for example, please make social media not anxiety inducing. I mean, statistically, it's anxiety inducing. <laughs> You know, God's a God of order. He's not going to change, you know, the laws of physics. You know, information overload is a physics problem. He grants miracles, sure. 
but if he happens to grant you miraculous healing from something like anxiety that doesn't mean you can't fall back into it if you don't change your ways if you think oh that means i'm immune to anything anxiety inducing wrong you know and and a lot of times he doesn't just he doesn't just take away the storm he he walks with you through the storm god placed physical consequences for a reason to teach us spiritual lessons <clears throat> and maybe anxiety is a consequence of something and we should not take his healing lightly it doesn't happen often you know sometimes <clears throat> you know when i received miraculous healing from you know anxiety or certain things doesn't mean it went away forever but it went away for some time and gave me time to heal and learn and adapt and really he answered that prayer by giving me the most difficult things in life unbearable things um i know there's really unbearable things happening right now but to me they were unbearable but strive to live by the spirit and always be looking deeper into our hearts where sin might live where maybe we hardened our hearts or where god led us into our ways through not changing our ways after um, being healed from something that's probably a step closer to living by the spirit than simply doing only the things that you want to do i'll close in prayer thank you god again for this opportunity to speak to these children um, let it sink into their hearts let them not forget the words um, they heard that were true god let them find ways that you've uh, shown your faithfulness to them and let them never forget those ways and, and build that conviction it takes to remain steadfast amidst uncertainty and to not try to take matters into their own hands, but to always tread carefully, but not with overbearing anxiety, God. I pray these things in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I just want to give some summary a recap of Alex, uh, Mr. Soil Dinkins' sermon uh, and uh, summarize some of his key points, and then we will um, switch over and, um, and and we'll conclude our time. But I just quickly wanted to uh, just reflect on the passage. The, the main passage that uh, Mr. Sil Dinkin was working from is in First Corinthians uh, chapter one, and it, and it's verses four through eight. And so, if you if you have your Bible, you could read along with me. It's, I give thanks to my God always for you, because, and this is Paul speaking to the Corinthians, right? Some of us are going to the high school Bible studies. You know, we've been walking through Corinthians, and, and so we got a really good context of what's going on. And so Paul's writing to them saying, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given to you in Christ Jesus. So God's given the Corinthian church grace, that's unmerited favor, in Jesus, and what Jesus did for them, which is kind of what Alex is talking about. That in every way you were enriched in him, that's in Jesus, with all speech and all knowledge. In other words, the word of God fills our lives with knowledge, and not, thus, thus our conduct, the way we behave, begins to conform to Jesus' image, and no longer being as the image of the world or a fallen uh, wrong way of life, but Christ redeems and restores us through his, his word. And it says in verse 6, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait eagerly or you wait for the revealing of the Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So that last verse is our theme verse, as you guys know. Um, but I, I just wanted to note that it's, it's that, um, as he says, so that you are not lacking any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so if you remember when Alex started off the sermon, he talked about um, uh, uh, our confidence. 
our confidence for salvation, our confidence for uh, living well today, obeying, the, uh, living out God's will today, and and standing before the the Lord when He returns at the revealing of Lord our Lord Jesus Christ. Our confidence is in Jesus. So when we keep our eyes on Christ, we can have confidence that as we face daily decisions, if our eyes are on Christ, we will be provided the wisdom and the way to walk through those challenges. So. Um, so when Alex spoke to uh, Jesus, uh, healing, working on the Sabbath, uh, he's referring to the fact that Jesus was actually showing the Pharisees the true spirit of the law. Jesus fulfilled the law. He didn't break the law. Jesus was the perfect, perfect one who obeyed the law so well and so rightly that um, he he actually, he's the only one who merited salvation. Hence why we have to trust in him, not ourselves. So we don't look to ourselves. We don't look to our own obedience. We look to Christ who then challenge, transforms our lives to be obedient. Does that make sense? So, so yes. Yeah. Um, and that's an important point that, that if you're struggling with some particular sin or some hardship, you look to Jesus. Don't look to your particular sin. I, I think about um, sometimes with, uh, when I grew up, I, I used to race dirt bikes. Has anybody ridden a dirt bike, motorcycle, four wheeler, bicycle? <laughs> Have you guys noticed when you go through like a soft dirt, it begins to form what's called a rut or it gets deeper and deeper and it, it gets harder to balance. Right. And what happens in motocross, if you look at the rut, when you're riding through it, what ends up happening? You, you get, you're afraid. So you start looking at the rut and you end up, it's actually harder to get through. But rather, if you look ahead, you look ahead and not into the rut, but you pick the, the rut you're going to take. But then you look ahead. What ends up happening is you can pedal right through it. You got stability and you're good to go. And this is what Paul's telling the Corinthians. Hey, you, you have lots of struggles. You have sinful struggles. You're divided. Some follow Paul. Some follow Apollo. So you guys are behaving carnally, worldly. But if you keep your eyes on Christ, your Savior, Paul is confident that those believers, the people who are actually putting their faith in Christ, looking to him, that they will overcome all these troubles. And that's, again, because Jesus has fulfilled the law. He's imparted his spirit into our lives. We have the spiritual gifts. We have um, the abilities, the, all the fullness of God to, to live out the will of Christ. And so, yes, we're no longer under the Mosaic covenant because Christ fulfilled that. But now we're under Christ's law, which is to love God, love neighbor by the power of the Holy Spirit. We're freed to love God now because of what Christ did. And... Um, and so know this, that your confidence is in looking to Christ, not looking to your culture, not looking to yourself, not looking to um, the next big thing in, in social media, not looking to uh, your own sin and failure, but re looking to Christ, receiving that forgiveness, that repentance and walking forward and moving forward in the grace of God. I hope that's encouraging for you guys. Reflect on that opening verses in 1 Corinthians, verses 4 through 9. Um, we are, our confidence is in, in Christ himself. Three things I'm thankful for this season are my family because they're always there, my friends because they support me through whatever, and the most important thing, which is the Lord and Savior because he gives us everlasting, eternal life and hope. I'm thankful for my relationship with God. I'm thankful for my friends and the people that God puts in my life to encourage me. I'm thankful for everything that God has blessed me with. And I'm thankful for the opportunities that he gives me to bless others and to see people's lives changed. Hi, I'm Hannah, and I'm thankful that I live in the country where I can explore God's nature. I am thankful for my family, my friends, and many other things. The hymn, Count Your Blessings, is a commonly sung song during the Thanksgiving season. The lyrics are, When upon life's billows you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Are you ever burdened with the load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the day goes by. When you look at others with their lands and gold, Think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy, your reward in heaven nor your home on high. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings angels will attend, help and comfort give you to your journey's end. 
Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. I encourage you to take a moment to count your blessings and be thankful for them this Thanksgiving season. Hey y'all, uh, I would have to say that I am very grateful for God's grace. Um, he definitely gives it to me a lot and uh, I definitely need it a lot too. So um, I would say that I'm extremely grateful for that. And I would also say that I'm very grateful for my friends as well. Uh, they're constantly there to pick me up when I need it and to encourage me and strengthen me when I'm weak. Um, so I'm very grateful for them too. Thank you to my student council members for sharing that. Um, our theme for this month was Thanksgiving. So I just want to encourage you all to go ahead and reflect on your blessings and what you're grateful for this season. Um, so I hope that everyone enjoyed their time during Student Chapel today. Please keep in mind that we are still taking late registrations for our social club. So if you're interested in participating, please register today. So many items are available to purchase in our e-store, and those options will continue growing. If you haven't had the opportunity to look at those items, the link to do so will be right there in the chat. Our virtual college fair will be held today from 9 a.m., which is right now, to uh, 4.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you'd like to participate, please feel free to hop in and hear some great topics from several universities and EA staff about admissions, dual enrollment, and more. We will also host our next virtual retreat for our 12th grade students on January 24th. Not only will we play a few games, worship, and hear a message, but there will also be some pretty awesome giveaways. More information will come at a later date. If you're interested in participating at all in our student chapels, whether in worship and praise, sharing a word, or even a prayer, please feel free to have your parents send me a direct email. My contact information will be in the chat as well. Thanksgiving break and Christmas break are perfect for kids who are behind and need to catch up or would like to work ahead and finish the semester or school year early. So please take some time out to get caught up, to go over your assignments, to get organized during your time, um, down in your time away from EA to try to get ahead or play catch up if you need to. But I believe that this concludes our chapel.